Chapter one, Walt Disney. Walter Elias Disney was born more than 100 years ago on December 5th, 1901 in Chicago, Illinois. He grew up on a farm near Marceline, Missouri where three older brothers and a younger sister. Walt was a boy with imagination and talent. He would gaze up at the clouds and imagine them slowly changing from one animal shape into another. Once he got in trouble for painting pictures all over the outside of the family's old white house with black tar. In Marceline, most people figured he would become an artist because he drew all the time. He and his brother Roy, who were eight years older than, than Walt, were good friends. Their family didn't have much money and their father was strict. Roy was almost like a second dad to Walt, sometimes making sure he got a toy or some candy on his birthday. Growing up on a farm, the brothers learned the importance of hard work and they never forgot it. Walt fell in love with trains when he got a summer job selling snacks and newspapers to passengers. Much later on, Walt even built a small train in his backyard for his family. All his life, he remained a kid at heart. As a boy, Walt was always drawing, even in the margins of his school books, to turn them into flip books. In high school, he took art classes at night. During World War I, Walt drove a Red Cross ambulance he decorated with cartoons. He dreamed of making films and doing things with animation. In 1923, he moved to Hollywood where he and Roy began the Disney Brothers Cartoon Studio. Today, the official Disney fan club is called D23. D for Disney and 23 for 1923 because that year was an important turning point. Here's a little bit about Roy O. Disney. He lived from 1893 until 1971. Roy and Walt were very different. Roy was smart, was quiet, smart about money and camera shy. Walt was creative and outgoing. As boys, Walt and Roy shared a bed in the attic of their family's house. In 1923, Roy and Walt lived in a one bedroom apartment where Roy did all the cooking. Walt and Roy would disagree and argue at times. But even if he disagreed with one of Walt's ideas, Roy would usually support him. Roy believed in Walt. He also thought Walt was too trusting sometimes. He tried to protect him from any clever crooks. By making good business deals for their company, Roy gave Walt the time and freedom to make his dreams come true. In a speech, Walt once said, In my career, it helps to have some kind of genius. I've got it, but it happens to be in the person of my brother, who runs the company. Roy and his wife had one son, also named Roy, who worked at Disney when he grew up. Roy Disney died on December 20th, 1971, about three months after Disney World opened. And there's a picture of Roy Disney. Walt Disney won many honors, including 32 Academy Awards, the most ever in history. One of his honorary awards was in 1932 for the creation of Mickey Mouse. Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was the very first full length animated musical film. It's also my favorite. It was a huge success. The Golden Award Walt received for the film included seven little statuettes to represent the dwarfs. Dopey's my favorite. Over the next five years, Disney created more classic full-length animated films, including Pinocchio, Fantasia, Dumbo, and Bambi. Of course, he would go on to do much more. Walt married Lillian Bounds, an animator working for his company in 1925. He liked to take their two daughters, Diane and Sharon, to ride the merry-go-round in Griffith Park near the famous Hollywood sign. As he waited for them on a nearby bench, he wished there was a place that had entertaining activities for both the young and the young at heart. 
This wish would eventually spark the idea of creating a theme park. Amusement parks have been around for a long time. Trivoli Gardens in Copenhagen, Denmark opened in 1843 with fabulous gardens and two amazing mechanical attractions, a roller coaster and a carousel. Here's Walt accepting an award. And here's Lillian Disney. Luna Park in 1903 and Dreamland in 1904 opened at Coney Island in New York when Walt was a little boy. Their attractions introduced visitors to foreign or imaginary lands. He could ride an elephant from India or blast off on a pretend trip to the moon or go on a gondola ride called Canals of Venice. But no one had ever built a theme park that was all about cartoon and fairy tale characters until Walt. This is a picture of Luna Park. Here's a little bit about making Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. During the making of Snow White in 1937, Walt would play acting roles for animators to explain how he wanted the characters to behave. To draw Snow White during dancing in the scene, animators watched a film of a woman dancing. To draw the dwarfs' goofy expressions, the artists would watch themselves make goofy expressions in a mirror. Animals were kept at the studio during production so artists could draw them too. Animators drew black and white outlines of the characters on transparent sheets called cells. Background cells were created separately from the character cells. Women in the ink and paint department painted colors on the back side of the cells. They would fill in the spaces inside the black outlines like in a coloring book. They also got the brilliant idea to paint actual makeup on Snow White's face. This gave her a rosy, natural look in the film. The finished cells were photographed in sequence. When they were shown rapidly, the characters on them appeared to move, much like in a flip book. And here's the artist drawing goofy expressions. And that's the end of chapter one.